Hi everyone, today I thought I'd do a quick retrosynthesis of the small fuel on the screen. I'm going to do this in quite an old school way, but hopefully one that introduces some useful ideas. If you find the video useful, please do drop it a like and consider subscribing to my channel. That really helps me plan what sort of videos to do next. Right then, so this molecule only really has one main functional group, and that's in the middle. That's an alpha beta unsaturated ketone, or sometimes called an enone. But there's a feature over on the right hand side of the molecule here that I'd like to keep an eye on. The center in green is called a spiro center. That's when two rings fuse at one point. So by definition, this is a quaternary carbon. But one thing that can add trickiness in a retrosynthesis is that all of its substituents are carbon based. So there's no heteroatom to help us with a disconnection. So in this video, we'll hopefully head towards the substrate, which can help us out with making that. However, a general retrosynthetic analysis suggests we should try to disconnect somewhere in the middle and alpha beta unsaturated ketones are some of my favorite functional groups to disconnect first whenever I spot them. There are two very standard ways of doing this, either using some sort of aldol condensation or using a Wittig reaction, both of which disconnect across the carbon-carbon double bond here. And because this will just take me back to one molecule and I'll be reliant on an intramolecular reaction, I'm going to focus on the aldol type disconnections here. They're often a lot easier to control in intramolecular senses. So disconnecting across the carbon-carbon double bond via an aldol disconnection should take me back to this keto aldehyde. The plan is to enolize in this position by taking this proton in green, because if I were to form an enolate there, it would be one, two, three, four, five away from a good electrophile. Luckily, I noticed that this aldehyde is non-enolizable, so I don't need to worry about selectivity issues there. I can also just note that this proton over here is actually probably more acidic, the one in red. But if I were to form an enolate at this site, it would be one seven to the electrophile. So there are two enolizable protons here. I want an aldol reaction to be followed quickly by an E1CB elimination to give me the alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl. I've got two possible rings that can form, five versus seven. Five is much better than seven for all the standard reasons. So actually I just need a base that hangs around that can reversibly deprotonate those protons, which while the green one's about pKa20, the red one will be a bit less. But something that can keep everything in equilibrium would just be something like sodium ethoxide. So I just stir it up. The two enolates can form in equilibrium, but only one of them can react further. So now I have a dicarbonyl compound. When you have difunctionalized compounds, it's always a smart move to have a look at what their relationship is to each other. So just putting in some red numbering, they're one, two, three, four, five, six. So I need to do a one, six disconnection. Now, 1,6 is quite far apart, and often a really good way of dealing with this sort of disconnection is to actually do a reconnection, as in form a ring between carbons 1 and 6. Now, my plan is to reconnect to a six-membered ring with an alkene. Now, these can be carbons 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The spiro ring comes off number 5, and the rest of the structure, this remaining benzyl group, comes off carbon 1. Now, the reason why I can do that type of disconnection is that because I know a reaction that is really good at oxidatively cleaving carbon-carbon double bonds to give two carbonyls, and this is an ozonolysis. Now, the molecule looks a bit different, and we can reassess its functional groups. It's just an alkene. A really good old-school way of making alkenes is to do it via some sort of elimination reaction, and that gives us quite a bit of flexibility of what we disconnect back to. So I'll do a functional group into conversion. And there are two places that I could put my leaving group on here. I could choose the one on the left to put a leaving group there. But this is no good because there are three different protons that I could eliminate. So there are three potential alkene products or four if you count E and Z isomers for one of them. This is a selectivity nightmare. We shouldn't go this way. Even worse, reactivity will probably favor taking this proton off and putting the alkene in the wrong place. Note that an alkene product there would be the most stable. It would be conjugated with the phenol group. That means an E2 transition state would also be lower in energy because it would be conjugated to the phenol group. So it would be the fastest reaction by E2 and by E1, well, if you formed a carbocation at that tertiary center, it would still be favorable to lose that proton because you'd end up with a conjugated product. So actually we don't have a choice. We have to put the leaving group here. And that means there's only one proton that can eliminate here. This is far more controlled. Now I can pick anything I like for a leaving group. And while I'm playing around with a retrosynthesis, often useful to use oxygen-based leaving groups. So I'm just gonna use a tosylate, and I'd expect to be able to do some sort of E2 elimination here with no problems. So next step, I need to make that tosylate. That's pretty easy. I can just use tosyl chloride and pyridine. That will take me back to this alcohol. At this point, I notice there's a branch point on this ring. And I do know that this type of benzyl substituent is particularly good for alkylation type reactions. So I think it's going to help me to do another functional group into conversion to the ketone. Ketones are way more versatile as functional groups in synthesis. And to go backwards, I can just use sodium borohydride. So now I can just take that benzyl group off. This is classic enolate chemistry. We can note that we're still non-enolizable on the alpha position to the right-hand side of that ketone. So this is a really good opportunity to, to simplify the molecule, the plan being to use enolate alkylation. And that takes me back to a molecule that really only has the spiro center left to deal with. 
Now with a bit of experience with retrosynthesis, there's some pattern spotting up for grabs here. This type of quaternary center directly next to a ketone can be installed quite sneakily using a pinnacle rearrangement. This is from a dial. I'll run through a plan in a second, but that allows me to disconnect back to cyclopentanone. In fact, two of these, that gets all 10 of the carbons into my molecule. This is readily available and then we're done. So I'll just run through how the forward synthesis would work and in particular that step. So to start with, I will take two of these and I'm going to do a radical coupling here. So treating this with magnesium metal, magnesium has two outer electrons, which aren't held on very tightly. And also magnesium can form strong bonds to oxygen. So for example, a single electron can be donated here to reduce the ketone to a radical. Now, of course, magnesium has two outer electrons, so it's able to do this twice to two different molecules. And while those radicals are held together, we can form a new carbon-carbon bond like this. That gives me this intermediate, which I can do an acid workup on to get rid of the magnesium and give me the diol. Next step, I'm going to treat this with strong acid this time and heat it. Now we can notice that there's actually two quaternary centers here. So there's a lot of strain in that molecule. There's a lot of steric hindrance and I can protonate one of them and make it a good leaving group. Now we can just imagine it forming a carbocation like this, but actually the nearby group here is able to relieve some of the strain by doing a carbocation rearrangement at this point. There's a pattern here that there's a one-two relationship between the electron source, this lone pair, and the electron sink. This is a standard pattern for migration reactions. And I could get a migration of one of the carbon-carbon bonds like this. So rather than just having a tertiary carbocation, it's much more favorable to go via the lone pair stabilized cation instead, which actually gives me exactly what I want. Following those arrows, this ring on the left-hand side now has an extra carbon involved. We can see now that these two carbons are actually connected and the bond in the middle that I've indicated in green has broken. That sets up my spiro center quite nicely without too much effort, after of course losing a proton. And then we just need to progress on. The enolate alkylation step from before, well, I should be able to use LDA, at minus 78 degrees, there's only one enolizable proton just here on the left. And once I've made my nucleophile, I can just put in benzyl bromide to give me my alkylated product. Next step, well, I need to set up my elimination to my alkene. So firstly, sodium borohydride takes me to the alcohol. Second step, make the tosylate. So just standard conditions, tosyl chloride and pyridine. Three, well, I want to do an E2 just because there's no real reason not to. Potassium terputoxide is quite a useful go-to base for that type of reaction. And to finish off, an ozonolysis reaction. So here I'd need to bubble through ozone gas and do a neutral workup. So common ways of doing that would be to use dimethyl sulfide once you've formed your ozonized intermediate, or maybe triphenylphosphine. If you don't want your lab mates to get annoyed with the smell you might make. Now we're back to the keto aldehyde and just treatment with sodium methoxide will finish this off and take me to my target molecule. And we're done. If you found this discussion useful, just a reminder, please do give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel for more organic chemistry content. Talking of which, there's a few other videos of mine just up on the screen now. Please do have a browse around. I'm trying to pitch them at various different levels. So hopefully you find some of the other ones interesting too.